One of the witnesses to the massacre was a sophomore named Derek Odell. He was wounded in the arm by the gunman, and a short time ago, he told me his story. Derek, tell me what happened. Well, basically, I was in Norse Hall, which is the place of the second shooting, and the gunman came into our class after he had fired maybe 10 rounds before, prior to that. And he came to our class, shot the person that was sitting next to me, shot our professor, then I hid under the desk, and then he proceeded to shoot everybody else in our class, practically. There were probably 15 to 20 people in our class, and he shot maybe 10 to 15 of them. That must have been so terrifying for you. It was truly uh, just surreal, nothing to even describe it. What, what did you hear? Uh, at first it sounded like hammers on the wall on like concrete blocks, just construction work, but then once he entered our class and started shooting, it ended up to be way more surreal than I think I'd ever want my life to be. And so you stayed under your desk? Uh, yes, until the gunman left our classroom. Can you tell us anything about the gunman? What he looked like, what he said, what he was doing when he came into the room? He was male, uh, Asian, uh, descent, and he was about six feet tall, uh, wearing a black leather coat and then a maroon hat. And he didn't say anything, which I found very unusual. Uh, he just started shooting people, and it's truly tragic. What kind of weapons did he have? Did you see that? It looked like he just had one uh, handgun, like a 9 millimeter handgun. He emptied maybe eight gunshots into our classroom and then reloaded it while he was there and emptied about another eight gunshots. When he left the room and you were able to get up, were there any other survivors in your classroom? There were two more people who hadn't been shot that I could tell. Uh, and with their help, I had not even realized I had been shot until I got gotten up and I saw the blood on my arm. Uh, but with the two people who hadn't been shot, with their help, we helped to barricade the door to prevent them from coming back in. Meanwhile, your classmates... Are, a lot of them are dead at that point, or almost dead. And your professor? Uh, I didn't see him, but it appeared that he got shot in the head. What so, class was this? This was a German class, uh, introductory German. After you kept him from coming back into the door, what happened after that? Well, we had barricaded the door. I used my foot, uh, I had tennis shoes on, and then he had come back after firing shots in other classrooms, and he proceeded to shoot the door, which was wooden. So bullets were hitting the door and almost coming through the door. So at that point, we got really scared. Uh, that he might come back in and shoot the rest of us, but we managed to keep him out. So you kept barricading the door and you just held on and that he left? Mm-hmm. Uh, and all, the same, all at the same time, uh, my arm was bleeding, so I used my belt at the time to try and stop the bleeding, and I was calling 911 with my other hand. You seem pretty calm, but obviously this must have been terrifying and you're very shaken up. Yeah, it was... Nothing can describe this. I mean, something that you would never imagine in life. Something like out of a dream. I heard that there were kids jumping out of the windows. We had considered it, but it's a second floor classroom, and it's probably about a 20-foot drop, and the windows are relatively small. So one of my friends who wasn't shot went over to the window to see how high it was, and he decided not to jump. But we had heard that other people were jumping out of their windows. Were you able to help any of the, the wounded in your class or? I was too afraid that he might come back and then through the door and shoot the rest of us. But everybody who was uh, at the door, I was trying to help them and stop their bleeding. How are you gonna go back to class? I don't know if I can ever go back to that classroom. I mean, the other classes, it might be different, but that classroom, uh, it'll just bring too back, back to me bad memories. Have you been able to talk to your parents? Uh, my dad lives in Euronook, and I was able to talk to him. He's actually uh, up in Blacksburg right now. But my mom's on business in California or er, Colorado, and I haven't talked to her yet. Well, I'm sure they'll be very anxious. She'll be very anxious to hear from you. I'll be glad to hear from her, too. How do you make sense of this? It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, a gunman shooting people without saying anything just seems like his intent to kill just irrational. Was there screaming? Was it weirdly silent? It, it was almost like a calm silence, like nothing, like a, a twilight zone or something. 
I mean, it's just impossible to imagine. Have you been able to talk to someone about this to help you? I talked to some counselors at the Montgomery Regional Hospital where they did a great job of taking care of me and everybody else. Derek O'Dell, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you very much for having me. I feel very fortunate to be here today.